Show me the one whose safety deemed such destruction. You must reunite it with its own kind. Where? The songs of eons past tell of battles between Mandalore the Great and an order of sorcerers called Jedi. You expect me to search the galaxy and deliver this creature to a race of enemy sorcerers? This is the way. You know this is no place for a child. Wherever I go, he goes. So I've heard. This is the way. The next season of Mandalorian is going to be very interesting because you're going to start to find out the power of the child, what the pa what the child really means. You will also start to uncover uh, the origins of the dark saber that Moff Gideon has and how that plays into previous Star War history connected to the Clone War Wars and other shows. And you'll start to get a real um, dramatic sense of the territory. Um, we're living in a universe that is, you know, just huge and so much to explore. So I think uh, this show is going to start to lay the groundwork for the depth and breadth that's going to come in season three and season four, where you're really going to start to get answers. Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. This is going to be my new Mandalorian Season 2 trailer video. We also have that clip of Moff Gideon himself, Giancarlo Esposito, talking about the Mandalorian Season 3, Season 4, and all the stuff they're going to be revealing during Season 2. Of course, I'll be doing episode videos for the Season 2 episodes when they release in October, so if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all those. I'll do a new Disney Plus giveaway. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and leave all your predictions for Season 2 on the video. So just breaking down all the stuff that he's talking about, that the Easter eggs and what it all means for the future of the show, starting with number five, he says we'll start to learn about Baby Yoda's true power and what he really means. What he's talking about there is his metaphorical and literal power. Metaphorically, what does another member of Yoda's race mean to the future of the Star Wars galaxy in a time period when Luke Skywalker is really the only true Jedi left, and he's busy trying to rebuild the Jedi Order starting with his new academy. The timeline of the Mandalorian series takes place right before Luke Skywalker creates that new Jedi Academy, so it doesn't exist yet right now when Season 2 is taking place. During this early period right after the events of Return of the Jedi, Luke Skywalker is still busy flying all over the galaxy with Han Solo, Leia, the rest of the New Republic as it's forming, trying to deal with the remnants of the Empire and former Imperial officers that just stuck around and are trying to become warlords controlling different areas of the galaxy. Moff Gideon is probably the best example of that on the show. There's no more Empire, technically, so technically there are no more Moffs, even though he still calls himself Moff Gideon. He was promoted before the fall of the Empire. After the Battle of Jakku, he didn't leave with the remnants to go to the Unknown Regions and turn into the First Order. He stuck around and planned to recreate the Empire according to his own plans, so that's why he's still calling himself a Moff. Commanding all these Imperial officers that are left over, trying to grab every single ship and asset that's left over from the Empire that he can get. Baby Yoda is literally so powerful and full of so much potential that he's viewed as a weapon that Moff Gideon wants to control, but also wants to use in his implied grand cloning plans, the re-envisioning of what the Empire could be according to his own plan. And speaking of clones, I saw a lot of questions about this on the last Season 2 trailer video that I did. If it wasn't clear, during the events of Season 1, Jon Favreau and Dave Filoni revealed that Baby Yoda himself is not a clone of Yoda. He was born naturally to parents of Yoda's species. They never revealed who his parents were. I know a lot of people had theories and posted all the Mori memes of Yoda and Yaddle, but he was born naturally somewhere in the galaxy, and we'll start to learn more about that during Season 2. So the cloning plan that they teased in Season 1 with all those Easter eggs seems like it's more about Moff Gideon using Baby Yoda's DNA to make a new army of super clones who are also Force-sensitive. They kind of tease that concept during Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker with the Sith Troopers. It's not really clear what Moff Gideon knows about the Emperor's grand plans during this period of galactic history and his contingencies. There are many different artifacts and treasure troves of Jedi and Sith items that the Emperor has stored in vaults all over the galaxy. 
But Moff Gideon came up in the Empire as a member of the ISB, the Imperial Security Bureau, and that branch is tasked with information gathering and secret keeping, so it's probably where he learned about the Darksaber before he acquired it. But number four, then he also says we'll only start to uncover the origins of the Darksaber and how that plays into previous Star Wars stories, the history of the galaxy, and the movies like The Clone Wars. We actually already know a lot about the origin of the Darksaber thanks to the Clone Wars episodes. The canonical lore behind it is that Tar Vizsla, an ancient Mandalorian from thousands of years ago who became a big leader of their people, also became the first Mandalorian to train as a Jedi. During that he created his lightsaber as all Jedi do, but in order to distinguish himself and be unique, he used different materials, gave it different properties with a different focusing crystal, and that turned into the Darksaber, called the Darksaber because of the color of its blade. After he died, like most Jedi's lightsabers, the Jedi Order stored it in the archives of the Jedi Temple, but during the fall of the Old Republic there was another war with the Mandalorians and members of House Vizsla used the opportunity to steal the Darksaber from the Jedi Temple, then passing it down through generations of their family as a symbol of their supremacy, until it wound up on the Clone War series in the hands of the current leader of their family at the time, Pre Vizsla, who was played by Jon Favreau himself. The live-action Mandalorian character that he played during Season 1 was also called Vizsla in the credits, so he's just another member of his clan. Also on the Clone Wars here, when the Darksaber showed up for the first time, Pre Vizsla was also the leader of the Death Watch clan of Mandalorians, which was kind of a separate thing, but most of their family was part of that group. Those are the same Mandalorians that came to rescue Din Djarin when he was a child in Episode 8 here. So if Giancarlo Esposito is saying we're going to learn more about the history of the Darksaber, we'll probably see more of them in flashbacks too, because during this period, Pre Vizsla would have been wielding the Darksaber. Katie Sackhoff's Bo-Katan Kreese is also supposed to show up during Season 2. She was also a member of the Death Watch clan, and later in the timeline, she was also the last person to wield the Darksaber before Moff Gideon. So she might show up during the flashbacks, she could also appear in present day, but if she does show up in present day, they'd have to use old age makeup because she is quite a bit older than Ahsoka. But number three, Giancarlo Esposito also says we'll get a dramatic sense of the territory, the full breadth of the Star Wars universe of characters and lore. He says there's so much of that to explore on the show, the characters and the lore. He's talking metaphorically and literally, metaphorically exploring more of the untouched areas of the Star Wars history going back to the Mandalorian's history, Mandalore the Great, the Mandalorian Jedi Wars thousands of years ago, like the Knights of the Old Republic era. Those were the references they were making during the dialogue in the Mandalorian Season 2 trailer. There's also the events of the Great Purge that they refer to during Season 1 that happened during the rise of the Empire that they could also cover. And because the Mandalorian is looking for more Jedi and more people of Yoda's race, maybe we get to explore more of the Unknown Regions, more of the Outer Rim Territory planets that we haven't seen before. Canonically, it's kind of difficult to explore the Unknown Regions though. That's why they create so many issues, like during Rise of Skywalker, they had to use the Sith Holocron to get to Exegol, which was in the Unknown Regions. Number two, he also says literally there's so much for them to explore in terms of new areas of the galaxy that they previously referenced in Star Wars movies and TV shows, but that we just have never actually been to. The Mon Calamari homeworld is the best example of that in the Mandalorian Season 2 trailer. It's a planet that's mostly covered in oceans, so most of them, the Mon Calamari and the Koran races that are native to that planet, live beneath the surface. He also says the Season 2 episodes are going to start laying the groundwork for the much bigger stories that they'll be telling in future seasons beyond Season 2, and they'll finally start answering the really major questions in Season 3 and Season 4. So number one, big thing, does that confirm that they're actually going to do The Mandalorian Season 4? They've already announced The Mandalorian has been renewed for Season 3, so that's already a go, but at the time when they did that, no one was talking about how many seasons the show would actually go on. My early guess when I was doing Season 1 episodes was that they would try to get to at least 5 seasons just because that's a solid number for a TV show, because the budget is so big and there are so many other Star Wars live action shows that they're making in development, and a ton of Mandalorian spin-off series in development too. My take on this is that unofficially behind the scenes, the show has been renewed for more than just season three already, and they gave Jon Favreau and Dave Filoni the green light to plan more future seasons worth of story. I don't think they're actually going to start filming season three till the end of this year or maybe early next year. They haven't really said yet, so all the season three details we'll get will just be in the form of teasers and hanging plot threads from season two episodes. The new season starts October 30th. As long as you have alerts enabled for my channel, you should see all those episodes when I post them, but leave all your requests in the comments below. Congratulations, Chipster321. You're the giveaway winner from my last big Star Wars video. Please email me on the about page of my channel so I can get your contact details.
Everyone click here for the full Mandalorian Season 2 trailer and Easter eggs and click here for that brand new Avengers WandaVision trailer and Marvel Easter eggs. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe. This is the way.